Hello everyone, welcome back to another Diamond Fire tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at creating cooldowns. So sometimes you have weapons or abilities and you want them to have cooldowns so that they're not just being spammed all the time. And we are going to learn how to do that today. Now there are uh, many different methods for creating cooldowns in Diamond Fire. I am going to show you two of them today. One of them is a method that uses items. Uh, and uses Minecraft's cooldown system that is applied to Ender Pearls and Chorus Fruit um, and I think maybe a few other things. Uh, and the other method is a variable based solution uh, using the timestamp values. So we are going to go ahead and get started. I just have started here with a join event and giving the player a stick when they join. Super simple um, just so that we can get started with this. Uh, this stick is going to be a magic wand where you right click and it throws snowballs, but we do want it to have a cooldown. So we are going to do right click event. Um, this is all normal so far. We are doing if player is holding the stick item and we will place that in the chest like so. Um, now here's where the fun begins. We want to put another if player and we are going to go to item conditions and we're going to check if the item is not on cooldown if the stick is not on cooldown. So we will go ahead and drop that in the chest and put in the stick like so. Um, now note this applies to all sticks. So if I had a stick named Ice Wand and a stick named Fire Wand, all of them would have the same cooldown applied. That is just how Minecraft works. It's not item specific, it is item type specific. Now we're going to go ahead and do the player action. Uh, this will be the launch projectile action that launches the snowball like we mentioned. Uh, another way of getting items that you may not have known about in addition to the creative inventory you can do slash I get and any item and you can get anything you want. So we're going to go ahead and drop that in the chest and we are going to now place a second player action to apply the cooldown. This is once again under item management and it is set item cooldown and we put in the item that we will be affecting the item type uh, as well as a number which is the cooldown in ticks. Now I'm going to place the stick with the item and for the number uh, we want a number in seconds so or sorry in ticks and there are 20 ticks in a second so I am going to go ahead and get a number and I'm going to say 40 so the cooldown will be two seconds. I'll drop that in the chest like so and that is all we have to do. We can do slash play and you can see that we right click with the stick and uh, a snowball only launches when the cooldown, uh, when the stick is not on cooldown. And you can see it ticking down. It's a very nice visual effect that is built into Minecraft. And that is the item method of creating cooldowns. Now, this method won't work in all cases. For example, if you have two items of the same type that need to have uh, not shared cooldowns, um, it also won't work if you have abilities that don't use items. So we're going to go ahead and check out another method of creating cooldowns, uh, which uses variables. So we're going to start by creating a second ability here. We're going to say that when a player left clicks, um, they are going to uh, do kind of a big leap forward. So they're gonna kind of launch up into the air a little bit and they're going to be launched forward. We want to create a cooldown for this ability and we are going to use the if variable block. So we are going to place that down like so uh, and what we want to check here is a little bit complicated, but it will make sense by the end. To start off, we are going to get a game value. Um, so these values are automatically set by the game. It's basically how you reference uh, some data that is within the game. For example, the amount of health that a mob currently has, or a player's current location, or the number of players on your plot. These are all game values. Uh, one of these game values which you'll find under plot values, is a timestamp value. The timestamp value is a very large number which represents the current time in seconds, basically the number of seconds that have passed uh, since, you know, January 1st, 1970. Uh, you can look up Unix time if you are interested in the exact mechanics of how that works. Uh, but for now, we can just take this timestamp value and we are going to put it in our if variable chest. So we're going to say if the current timestamp and now we're going to say if the current timestamp is greater than or equal to, and now we are going to use a variable. So we are going to go ahead and grab a variable. And since the cooldowns are per player, we are going to go ahead and say percent default. And this is the leap ability. So we'll say leap 
cooldown. So we have percent default leap cooldown, so this player who left click, what is their current cooldown on this leap ability? We will go ahead and place that like so. So if the timestamp is greater than this variable, then we are allowed to perform the leap ability. Um, now we'll get to what this variable means in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and get some copies for later. So now that we've determined that we can use the ability, we are going to go ahead and put down a player action. Um, and we'll do, uh, let's see, launch up. So this will launch them up a little bit. Um, and instead of grabbing a number from the menu and putting it in the chest, I'm going to use the shortcut, which is slash num. And let's say we'll launch them up uh, five. And let's say now uh, that we will launch them forward. Uh, let's let's go with 10. And uh, we can just check here. Um, we don't have a cooldown yet, but there we go. So this little leap dash ability uh, seems pretty solid so far. We're going to get back to our code now and give it a cooldown. So. To set the cooldown, we are going to use a set variable block, and we are going to use that variable uh, that we created earlier, the default leap cooldown variable, and we are going to set that variable equal to uh, the sum of two numbers. So we'll use the add numbers function here. Uh, now here's where things get interesting. What are the two numbers that we're going to be adding up uh, to get this variable? Well, what this variable means is this variable is a timestamp that represents when the player is allowed to use this ability again. So, if the current time is greater than whenever they're allowed to use the ability again, that means that it's not on cooldown and they can use it. So to set the cooldown, what we're going to do is we're going to set this time for when they are allowed to use the ability again to the current time plus whatever the cooldown is. So, let's go ahead and get our uh, current time um, one more time here, the game value plot values timestamp. So this is the current time whenever the game value is referenced. Um, and note this value is in seconds, uh, but it has millisecond precision. So we're going to drop that in here. And now we're going to put a number here. So we're going to say the current time plus some number of seconds uh, will be the cooldown. So I'm going to go ahead and say this has a three and a half second cooldown. So we're going to go ahead now and place this like so. Um, and this is technically all that is necessary to make this cooldown work. So let's give it a try. We can left click and we can see that even if we spam it, we are only able to use it every three and a half seconds. Now, one advantage of the timestamp method uh, is something that I'm about to show you. You can send the player a message to let them know how much time is remaining on the cooldown uh, if the ability is still on cooldown. So we're going to place an else block uh, next to this if block. So if uh, the timestamp is greater than or equal to when they are allowed to use the ability again, then they use it. If not, though, we want to tell them how much time is remaining. So let's go ahead and set a variable to get this time remaining. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a variable and we are going to call it um, time remaining. And this is going to be a local variable. So I'm going to sneak and then right click twice and that will go to local. So we will place that here. Uh, and we're going to say the time remaining is equal to the current time, or rather the default cooldown when they are going to use the ability again, or when they're going to be able to, minus what the current time is. So basically the difference between these two things, that's how much time is left. So we're going to put uh, this here like so, and this here like so, so it's default leap cooldown minus timestamp. We're going to go to numerical actions in the set variable categories, and we're going to say subtract numbers so that it is uh, subtracting them and getting our time. Uh, and now we are going to go ahead and put down a player action, and we are going to send them a message. So this is what's going to say uh, the cooldown. So um, we want a couple of text items uh, for this purpose, uh, as well as our time remaining variable. For our first text, we are going to say, I'm going to use uh, the red color here, and we're going to say, um, this ability is on cooldown for time remaining. This is the number of seconds, and we're just going to have uh, seconds. So, this ability is on cooldown for however much time remaining, seconds. And when we send this message, all of these will be strung together with spaces in between. Um, and if we play right now, we can see that if we uh, try to use the ability before the cooldown's up, we get that message that the ability is on cooldown for however many seconds are left. One last thing that we can do just to make this look a little bit prettier, we're going to go ahead and round our time remaining variable uh, to the nearest 0.1 seconds. 
So we're going to go ahead and take a set variable and we will insert it between these two blocks by placing it on the stone like so. Uh, and we are going to choose the round number action. Uh, and you can see that we are going to set the variable to some number that we're going to round. In this case, that'll be the time remaining variable uh, and a round multiple. So by default, that's one a whole number. We're going to use 0.1 uh, to round it to the nearest tenth of a second uh, to make this message a little bit prettier, a little bit more consistent. We're going to go ahead and get two copies of our time remaining variable and place them like so. And then we just need to place the number 0.1. And now, if we play the game, uh, you can see that our ability um, for the leap uh, is showing a cooldown message. And that uh, is how you create cooldowns, a couple ways of creating cooldowns in Diamond Fire. Thanks for watching.